Philip Schofield was one of the biggest stars in British television. With his TV wife, Holly Willoughby, he ruled the airwaves for over a decade. But under the surface, behind the glitz and glamour of the TV studios and the painted on smiles, something much more troubling was going on. In this episode, we go behind the scenes to find out exactly what went wrong for the daytime TV king, Philip Schofield. What's the true story? What was really going on at this morning? And what really caused his downfall? You might be surprised to find out the truth. I'm Joshua Perry Parker, and this is Daytime Scandal, the story of Philip Schofield. Part 1. The cracks begin to show. Our story begins on the 7th of September 2009, where inside the glitzy London TV studio, a nervous 29-year-old Holly Willoughby fiddles with her earpiece under the hot glare of the studio lights. Holly has been chosen as the new presenter of ITV's flagship daytime TV show, This Morning. This Morning is an iconic British show. It's been airing since 1988 and is the crown in ITV's daytime schedule. It regularly attracts over 1 million viewers and makes headline news every day, eclipsing the daytime shows on the other channels. Standing next to her is the king of daytime TV, Philip Schofield. Philip has been a presenter since 1982. He's a household name and is beloved by millions of viewers. Good morning. Yeah. Just as the title started, I said, I nah, I'm not doing it. Come <laughs> I'm holding on very tight. Welcome. Thank you. How do you feel? Hello. Um, like this isn't really happening. And with that, they're off. And a new era of their careers begins. Holly and Phil are a instant smash hit. The British tabloids heap praise on them and viewers fall in love with their on-screen partnership instantly. Over the coming years, they will secure their position as two of the biggest stars in Britain, securing multi-million pound deals with ITV and going on to present their own primetime programmes. Holly and Phil seem unstoppable. Everyone loves them. They have become hot property in the UK and soon start raking in huge amounts of money through advertising and sponsorship deals. Holly amasses an estimated £12 million in advertising deals. Everything from toothbrushes to yoghurt drinks, she rakes it in. She even sells her wedding photos to OK Magazine for a healthy £127,000. Philip is no different. He puts his face to car adverts, gin and even his own wine brand. In no time at all, the pair are multi-millionaires. They start to get more television gigs presenting together and host the glitzy primetime show Dancing on Ice. They're gods in the TV world. There is not an award show that they don't go to. But behind the glitz and glamour and the bright sparkly lights, the cracks are beginning to show. The first comes in November 2012. Holly and Phil have secured an interview with the then Prime Minister David Cameron. It's a big moment for this morning, and Holly and Phil are determined to score their viral moment, determined to make the headlines with the interview. And in order to do this, Philip Schofield chooses to do something truly extraordinary. The UK is currently in the midst of a sex abuse scandal. The shocking crimes of ex-children TV presenter Jimmy Savile have come to light, and Operation Utree is in full swing, investigating and hunting down high-profile figures involved in sexual abuse. As part of this, the internet is alive with unsubstantiated rumours, conspiracies and allegations against senior political figures. Schofield asks him, Another serious topic that is in the news at the moment is that there could be a paedophile ring in Britain, which leads all the way to Downing Street. He tells the Prime Minister, it takes a three-minute search of the internet to find the list of paedophiles. Last night I searched and he pulls a piece of paper from his pocket. Here are the names of those individuals and he passes it to the Prime Minister. It's an extraordinary moment. Philip Schofield has gone on Google, found a list of people 
that Twitter and Reddit are saying are paedophiles and given it to the actual Prime Minister. The sheer stupidity of it. The arrogance of believing that you sat at home with a glass of wine, googling some names, and then hijacking a national interview with the Prime Minister to give him the results of your Google research is truly extraordinary. Forget the hours of police investigations, victim statements and interviews. Here's a daytime TV presenter with a list of names he got off the internet. It was also a surprise to the producers of the show. No one knew or approved of Philip's actions. As you can imagine, ITV's lawyers would have shut down Schofield's plan in a second. But Philip didn't care. He and Holly are the stars of the show, after all. Schofield is condemned from all sides. His stunt is labelled as stupid and dangerous. What makes matters even worse is that due to the camera angle, the list of names was briefly visible on screen. These names immediately start circulating on social media and a witch hunt begins. Schofield is forced to apologise. He says, If any viewer was able to identify anyone listed, I would like to apologise and stress that was never my intention. Unfortunately, there may have been a misjudged camera angle for a split second as I showed the Prime Minister some information. You might notice that Schofield doesn't actually take responsibility for his actions. He doesn't say he was in the wrong, that it was a stupid lapse of judgement. Instead, he apologises if a misjudged camera angle allowed the names to be seen. So, in other words, it's the cameraman's fault. ITV apologises and says that disciplinary action has been taken. They don't say what it is, but as Schofield is their biggest star, it's not much more than a slap on the wrist and he's back presenting on this morning in no time at all. And what about Holly in all of this? Does she condemn Schofield? Of course not. Holly stays silent. It's a pattern that will soon become familiar. Whenever something starts going wrong, something that looks like it might impact her career, she goes into bunker mode and says nothing. Meanwhile, the mood at this morning feels like it is changing. As Phil and Holly become bigger and bigger stars, a culture develops that they are untouchable. Some staff complain about the way the stars are behaving. They lord it around the TV studios, make no effort to learn anybody's names, and are rude and entitled. Schofield is notably rude to guests and other This Morning presenters on air. He falls out with ITV presenters Ruth Langsford and Eamon Holmes. Ruth puts a formal complaint into ITV about his behaviour. Dr Raj Singh, this morning's TV doctor for many years, also complains to the management about Schofield's behaviour. The management's response, Ruth, Eamon and Dr Ranch are all sacked. But on the surface, the show goes on. The next crack comes in January 2016. Phil and Holly have been at the annual National Television Awards and they have just won the best daytime show. They drunkenly stumble out of the after party. They're drunk, steaming. Who cares if they have to present a live TV show in a few hours? They don't go to bed. Instead, they come straight to the TV studio, drunk, and stumble on air in the same clothes they had on all night. They giggle, trip over their words, and laugh their way through that morning's show. But this time, not everyone is laughing with them. Some viewers point out how unprofessional and disrespectful it is to turn up to work openly drunk and laugh in everybody's faces. The millions of people up and down the UK waking up at the crack of dawn, working full-time tough jobs, would of course be fired if they turned up drunk and then laughed about it. Some viewers have grown tired of their childish, silly antics. Others say this is all contrived. After all, the producers of the show took photos of Phil and Holly arriving for social media. There was plenty of time to get changed, get their hair and makeup done, and get ready for that morning's show. Instead, there was a conscious effort to get them on TV looking like drunk messes. That would get the headlines. In which case, they're taking the viewers for fools. And it's all one big act.
Again, it speaks to their ego and detachment from the viewers. They don't have to worry about the normal rules of the workplace or society. They are Phil and Holly. But by now, the wheels are starting to come off the Phil and Holly bandwagon. The show continues to crack, and the complaints about the toxic culture at this morning mount up. Meanwhile, some viewers have noticed that Schofield appears more uneasy of late on screen. He has visibly lost weight, and his face looks etched with pain. There have long been rumours about Schofield's sexuality, but Schofield, who is long married with two children, has dismissed these rumours as empty gossip. It was a shock then, that on the 7th of February 2020, Schofield surprisingly appeared on the Friday edition of This Morning. Sitting alongside Holly on the famous sofa, Holly reads out a pre-prepared statement on his behalf. It says, you never know what is going on in somebody's seemingly perfect life, and so you don't know what has been consuming me for the past few years. With the strength and support of my wife and daughters, I have been coming to terms with the fact that I am gay. I feel pain and confusion, but that comes from the hurt I am causing to my family. Schofield says that he's always been open and honest with his wife. He has no secrets, he says. He further adds, this is the right time. This is my decision. No one is forcing me out, he insists. While this comes as a surprise, and of course is top celebrity news, the reality is nobody really cares. A gay television presenter is hardly something new. Holly, close to tears, says, whatever happens in the future, I'll be by your side, forever and ever. Holly and Phil link arms and embrace. The studio erupts with applause. How brave of Philip. But, like all things at this morning, beneath the glitzy surface, what Schofield has just told viewers is not the full truth. And the full truth will wait, bubbling under the surface, to come out. It's 2022 now, and with the UK in the height of a cost-of-living crisis, Families up and down the country are struggling to cope with soaring inflation and massive household bills. In response to this, Phil and Holly present a tone-deaf competition, where viewers have the chance to spin the glittering wheel to see if they can win the prize of having their energy bills paid for. It's incredibly poor taste. Two multi-millionaires, grinning and giggling at the camera, spinning a glittery wheel to see if they will pay for their poor viewers' bills. It feels completely dystopian. And as the wheel spins around and clicks, it's becoming clear that Phil and Holly have lost touch with the audience. This morning is a people show. It's a lifestyle and magazine show that prides itself on presenting issues that matter to real, everyday, working Britons. This ethos seems to have all but vanished. But the biggest scandal is yet to come. And, in a very British way, it involves a queue. It's 4pm on the 8th of September 2022. All afternoon, the major channels in the UK have been covering a significant breaking news story. Queen Elizabeth II, monarch of the UK for 70 years, is gravely ill. And for Buckingham Palace to release a statement on the Queen's health, is incredibly rare, and so it seems clear what is happening. The flag is flown at half-mast at Buckingham Palace, and the Queen's death is announced. Operation London Bridge, the plans for the Queen's funeral, immediately swings into action. As part of this, it is announced that the Queen's coffin will lay in state in Westminster Hall, and the general public will have the opportunity to file past and pay their respects. What happens next is truly extraordinary. People in their thousands flock to London for their chance to pay their respects to Her Majesty. Within days, a huge queue stretches across London as hundreds of thousands of people join and patiently wait to pay their respect to the Queen. It's a truly remarkable sight. Hundreds of thousands of people stood outside in all weather, prepared to stand for sometimes days to have that brief moment inside Westminster Abbey with the Queen's coffin. It is a uniquely British sight. And what is more extraordinary is that everyone is treated equally in the queue. 
Among the general public, celebrities, dignitaries, and other UK public figures patiently wait their turn. David Beckham, Kelly Holmes, Sharon Osbourne, Theresa May. They all wait and queue. There is no fast access. And then comes along Phil and Holly. This morning have sent Phil and Holly to London to produce a segment on the Queen's lying in state. The plan is to have them interact with some of the queuers, get their stories, cheer them up, and report back to this morning viewers on the atmosphere. However, on that day, Phil and Holly also decide to do something else. As they are media, they can get access to Westminster Abbey without joining the queue. And so, they do exactly that. On the 18th of September, they walk past the hundreds of thousands of queuers, wave at them, and walk straight into Westminster Abbey to see the Queen's coffin. The BBC and ITV have been carrying live feeds of Westminster Hall, and within moments of them being in there, they're spotted. The reaction is instant. How have these two multi-millionaire TV presenters been allowed to walk past thousands of people and go straight in. As pensioners stand outside and queue in the rain for 24 hours, Phil and Holly use the fast lane. The general public is outraged and the tabloid media go in for them. They are on the front cover of all the papers. The headline screen, queue jumpers and entitled Phil and Holly. Phil and Holly insist they've done nothing wrong. They say that, as media, they had special permission to access a separate part of Westminster Hall, so they were able to see the mourners firsthand and report on the experience for those who could not go. They did not file past a coffin, they say, but were in a separate part of the room reserved for journalists. It's a hard sell for the public, and they're having none of it. This morning is plunged into crisis, Phil and Holly are accused of being arrogant and out of touch with the country, entitled celebrities who think they're better than everyone else. Phil would later say that it was not his idea to skip the queue, but someone else on the production. He said, I don't ever throw anyone under the bus, but I have a very good instinct for these things, and I knew it was a bad thing to do. He added, Holly and I were texting each other afterwards. I said to Holly, I knew I should have gone with my gut, and she said, I know. So again, it's another case of it being someone else's fault. Suddenly, Phil and Holly are less the golden couple and more damaged goods. They're dropped by a number of their sponsors, who don't want their products associated with the tainted pair, and their future as presenters looks in peril. But they pull through and continue presenting this morning. But now it's clear, something has changed. The public is no longer under the Phil and Holly spell. They are best friends off screen and both support each other. They work to get their career back on track. While Philip has managed to survive all of these scandals and crises so far, they have damaged him and his reputation. But if there's one thing he's learned about showbiz, is that it's up and down. But you're never out until it's over. Over the coming months, the pair continues to present this morning. But now their smiles seem even more painted on than ever. The happy veneer is breaking, cracking, and everyone can see through it. Schofield looks visibly thin and unwell, morning after morning. Holly seems detached. But Philip is determined to go on. He knows the public and live television better than anyone. And if anyone can pull this back, he can. However, there is still one big scandal that is waiting to come out. It is a lie that Philip has been telling for the past two years, that has now been bubbling under the surface and is reaching boiling point. He has lied to everyone about it. His family, his management, ITV, and even his on-screen wife, Holly. And this scandal, in a very British way, involves an illicit sex affair with a much younger member of staff. And it is this scandal that will end the career of the Daytime King. Part 2. The Truth Comes Out
It's been two months since Philip Schofield came out as gay on This Morning. During that now famous episode, where he was consoled and commended by his TV best friend Holly, he insisted that he had no secrets from his wife. He said he had always been open and honest about his emotions and feelings, and that no one had forced him to come out. Eamon Holmes, who was presenting on Schofield's coming out show, congratulated him live on air. No one should be ashamed of their sexuality, he says. But as he pulls Philip in for a hug, he notices something. There are a number of unusual faces in the studio. He scans the masses of faces standing behind the cameras. The most senior ITV management, the suits, are present. This is the first time he has ever seen them in the studio. As well as the management and what looks like several corporate lawyers, there's a group of journalists from the Sun newspaper watching and scribbling notes on their pads. Eamon starts to feel uneasy. This isn't all as it seems. It seems like this is all carefully orchestrated. That something bigger is going on under the surface. Something that's being covered up. And indeed, within minutes of Phil's coming out, there's a different version of events that starts to circulate amongst journalists. It's beginning to appear that Philip has not been completely open and honest about the situation surrounding his coming out. And that, in fact, the reality of it all is much more controversial and troubling. And to understand what led to this dramatic TV moment, we have to travel back to 2011 and a visit to a school. It's spring 2011, and in Ashton Underline in Manchester, Philip Schofield is making one of his visits to the Two Faced Theatre Company. He's a patron of the organisation, which helps children pursue careers in the performing arts. Schofield has been performing since he was young himself, so it's in his blood to help support other young people in the industry. It is here where Schofield first meets a teenage boy who has just turned 15. This person has the right to anonymity, and so we won't be using his real name on this show. Instead, we will call him Adam. Adam has been a fan of Schofield for years. He wants to pursue a career in acting and television. And so meeting Schofield in real life, and actually talking to him, getting his advice and guidance, is like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. A dream come true. Schofield enjoys meeting Adam too talking to him about his aspirations and providing him with guidance and advice. On the 26th of March 2011, Schofield follows him on Twitter. While Schofield follows 11,000 people on Twitter, some will question why a 50-year-old man is following a 15-year-old boy on a social media platform. Schofield insists it's a totally innocent follow. Adam sends Schofield a message at 2am thanking him for following him. Over the next two years, Schofield will continue to pay occasional visits to the school and speak to Adam and the other students. Adam will occasionally send messages to Schofield and reply to some of his tweets. Schofield does not reply to any publicly, but does exchange some private messages with Adam. Schofield insists that these were just chats about career and him providing Adam with advice. By 2014, Adam has just turned 18, and now Schofield starts tweeting him publicly, congratulating him for the acting gigs he's managed to secure. In July that year, Schofield arranges for Adam to have a day visit to the This Morning studio, and Adam travels down to London, his first time in the big smoke. As he enters the This Morning studio, he's in awe at the lights, the glamour, the excitement of it all. Schofield comes over to greet him and shows him around the TV studio. It's a hugely exciting moment for Adam. He's in a national TV studio with one of TV's biggest stars and he knows his name. And it's perhaps here where we can really begin to ask questions. Not anyone can walk into a TV studio and be greeted by name by the host. It seems that Adam has some kind of special access, some kind of inside line with Philip that enables him to get these opportunities 
that others could only dream of. Hundreds of thousands of young people want to get into television and would love to be invited by TV's biggest star into the studio. So what was so special about Adam? Adam, meanwhile, has become bedazzled by his visit to London, and he is now determined to move to the capital and pursue a career in television. He even starts a crowdfunder page to help with moving and living costs, and raises £500 from friends and family. In the summer that year, he makes the move to London, and straight away lands work experience at This Morning. ITV states on its website that they publish all work experience placements online. Thousands of young people eager to pursue a career in television are invited to apply and go through the formal application process. But it seems like that process doesn't apply for one person. Adam. Philip says that he helped to get Adam work experience, as he had done for hundreds of people throughout his career. Perhaps knowing Philip helped get Adam the golden opportunity of work experience on Britain's biggest daytime show. Perhaps Philip helped Adam skip the queue. Adam is now 20 and has been on work experience at this morning for a week. Philip is impressed by him. He's incredibly capable and everyone on the show loves him. But some start to notice something a little off about Adam and Philip's relationship. Adam seems to have an extraordinary amount of access to Philip and ITV. He just seems to have doors open for him. Philip even regularly goes for lunch with Adam after the show. It's something quite noticeable. The star presenters of TV shows don't usually go for lunch with the people on work experience. Behind the scenes, the rumour mill starts turning. There has been gossip about Schofield's sexuality for years, but as he's been long married with a wife and kids, most dismiss this as idle rumours. But on some private WhatsApp group, ITV staffers are starting to speculate. What's going on with Phil and that boy? What's Dirty Phil up to? They ask. A few months later, and Adam has now secured a full-time role at This Morning as a runner. Philip later insists that he got this job on his own merit, but realistically, this is difficult to believe. TV is a tough industry. Thousands of youngsters want to work in it, and it's incredibly difficult to break into. It may well have been that Adam was good at his job, but it's almost certain that his friendship with Philip is what got him these roles. Which makes you wonder, what was Philip's motivation? Why Adam and not the thousands of other hopefuls? At this point, Philip and Adam would define their relationship as mates, but they're getting closer. Adam is increasingly seen alongside Philip. Philip keeps opening doors for Adam. He has extraordinary access. He's even allowed to use ITV equipment and the This Morning Studio to produce his own showreel, which he posts on his Facebook page. Adam has now been working on This Morning for a couple of weeks. One Thursday morning, Adam goes to Schofield's dressing room as usual. They relax and chat about the upcoming show. They're entirely relaxed in each other's company. They laugh and make jokes. As they go through the scripts, turning the pages, their legs brush each other. Philip looks down and Adam doesn't move away. Philip feels his heart quicken. They make eye contact with each other, lean in and kiss. For Schofield, there is no going back. At that moment, it's all over. He has cheated on his wife with a man no less. He has kissed a much younger, junior member of staff in the workplace, in his dressing room. A member of staff that he nurtured and brought onto the show, that he had known since he was a child. But the magnitude of the situation doesn't register with Philip straight away, and he continues to act entirely normal. Adam begins to act as Schofield's private assistant. Everywhere Schofield goes, Adam seems to follow. Philip does other TV work, Five Golden Rings, The British Soap Awards, and alongside him always is Adam. From TV studios to media events to showbiz parties, Adam is by Schofield's side, and in secret, their affair continues. Stolen moments in Schofield's dressing room, 
Visits to Philip's multi-million pound London flat. Drunken fumbles after showbiz parties. And every night, Philip goes home to his wife. Adam, of course, gets every gig Philip goes to and continues to receive fast track access around ITV. He has quickly become a non-negotiable part of Schofield's life. If you're hiring Schofield, you're hiring Adam as well. Their affair has been going on now for a few months and it's starting to prove challenging for Adam. He's a young 20 year old, new to London, engaging in a secret affair with one of TV's biggest stars. Adam himself is also not yet open about his sexuality, and so this adds to the pressure he's feeling. He's also seen rumours on social media about him, gossip and speculation about him and Schofield. It's a lot for a young man to handle. He begins to break down in front of some of his colleagues. He calls them late at night, in a mess, in tears. It's all got too much. It's 2018 and the National Television Awards are in full swing. Walking down the red carpet are the cast of this morning, led by its stars Phil and Holly. They're making their way into the show. Fans and press shout out for them, beg them for an autograph or a selfie, or even just to look their way. They win Best Daytime Show that night. The Prosecco and Champagne is flowing freely, and Adam finally feels he can let himself go. That night, Adam drinks and drinks. And then it all comes pouring out. In drunken tears, Adam tells his colleagues about his relationship with Philip, the pressure he's been under to keep it secret, the pain and anguish he feels. He cries and cries. By the next morning, Schofield's relationship with Adam is now a open secret. Everyone in the industry has heard the rumour. Everyone has heard the gossip. And now Schofield and Adam's relationship start to phase out. Adam is really struggling with the pressure and it's all got too much for him. Schofield is feeling the pressure too, but his focus is on keeping it quiet. He hasn't told anyone and he intends to keep it that way. The pair begin to avoid each other in the corridor. They stop making eye contact. Adam no longer follows Schofield around. And now that Adam has been open with some colleagues at this morning, it's become untenable for him to stay there. With help from Schofield, of course, he moves to the ITV show Loose Women. This comes as a shock to everyone at Loose Women. They already have a runner. Why has this young man suddenly arrived to take the role? They, like most staff at ITV, have heard the rumours of Schofield's relationship with him, and they feel uneasy about what is happening. Not only that, they actively dislike Schofield, feeling that he's arrogant and out of touch. Schofield, meanwhile, continues in the spotlight at this morning. He is struggling under the rumours and the gossip as well. He looks visibly thinner and more drawn on screen. He decides he needs to do something. He can't go on. He has to do something to quell the rumours, to come across as being open and honest with the viewers about his private life. And so he makes one of the biggest decisions of his life. He tells his wife and children that he is in fact gay and that he wants to go public with it. One can only imagine the torment this causes, not just to Schofield, but also to his wider family. They are supportive. They hold him close and hug him. Next, he tells his best friend, Holly Willoughby. They both break down, fall to their knees and cry on each other. Holly assures him everything will be okay and she will always, always be beside him, holding his hand. Supporting him. Just how true that statement is will be tested sooner than she thinks. Schofield starts a WhatsApp group called The Event, where they begin to plan his coming out on the show. As part of this, his management advise him that he should give a tell-all interview to the Sun newspaper. There's going to be a lot of interest in this. It's going to be front page of the tabloids. So he should really put his side out. Or, as they say in the media world, he should control the narrative. He needs to quell any of this young runner nonsense that's circulating online. And indeed, when he comes out live on air, he insists that no one has forced him. He has no secrets, he promises the viewers. The Sun journalist Dan Wooten insists that Schofield's whole coming out was all fake. 
He says the story was very different. He claims that Adam came to him, wanting to sell his story on the star and do an exclusive on their affair. Schofield says this is completely false. The pair were in fact still close and still in contact at that point. The fact of this all is that Adam has never spoken out. Ever. And why is that? Some rumour that Schofield has made him sign a non-disclosure agreement, banning him from ever speaking out and telling the truth. Schofield flatly denies this. He says that Adam never wanted to be in the news. He always wanted a quiet life. But the fact is, that stolen kiss, the illicit affair, has now all but destroyed his young life. Schofield breathes a sigh of relief and hopes that now he has come out, it is all over. The attention will come off him and he can continue to be one of the biggest stars in Britain. The question is, just how long can he keep this secret? Within hours of Schofield coming out on TV, there's a whole different story emerging online. Those who have worked on the show, many of whom seem to have an axe to grind against Schofield, start WhatsApping each other about the young runner. They're outraged at what they have seen, Schofield insisting that he has no secrets live on TV, when they know about him and Adam. They're incredulous and start posting stories on blog sites and Twitter. Within days, everyone has heard these rumours. During live broadcasts of the show, the This Morning hashtag is bombarded by people naming Adam and calling on This Morning and Schofield to tell the truth. Schofield knows all of this. He's active on social media. He sees people tweeting at him and tweeting at Adam. But he's confident that if he can just keep his head down, stick to the media lines, the rumours and gossip will all go away and he can continue to be the biggest star on UK television. After all, we all know that anyone can post anything online, and just because something is on the internet doesn't mean it's true. Philip learned that the hard way, and so the show goes on. Schofield and ITV ignore the thousands of tweets, emails and messages. Everyone pretends everything is okay, but it's not. These rumours aren't going away, and now ITV management are becoming concerned. They feel they have to take some form of action. They don't want to be exposed on this, so the management requests a meeting with Schofield and with Adam. There's a potential abuse of power here. They don't want to be sued. During the meeting, they put these allegations to Schofield. They ask him, categorically, if he has ever, at any time, been in a relationship with Adam or any other This Morning staff member. Schofield tells them, absolutely, categorically not. I've been in TV for 50 years. I would never do anything stupid like that. It's all Twitter lies and gossip, he tells them. Adam is also interviewed by ITV. He looks down at the floor and mumbles the denial. And so the facade continues. Holly is also becoming increasingly concerned. She's been aware of the rumours for years and she's been tweeted daily about Adam. She's also concerned because Holly is fiercely business minded. She is always looking out for her reputation, protecting her career, her sponsorships. She does not want to be associated with anything or anyone that could damage her brand. So one day at lunch, she asks Philip directly about him and Adam. Philip is her best friend, and so it's a difficult conversation. She tries to hold back the tears as she confronts Philip with what people are tweeting her, what people are whispering in the corridors at ITV. Philip looks her in the eye and grabs her hand. He assures her, promises her, that this is all lies. He has never been in a relationship with Adam, they're just good mates. People are spreading gossip. Maybe they don't like how big he is. Maybe they're being homophobic since he came out. Holly is relieved. She believes Philip wholeheartedly. In fact, she's sorry she ever doubted her best friend. He pulls her in for a hug 
and they embrace warmly. I'll always be with you, Philip, she says, as she chokes on her emotions. For Schofield, lying is now becoming a pattern. He has lied to ITV management, lied to his best friend, lied to his wife of many years. Every time the management or lawyers ask him, everything he says is lie after lie after lie. And it's all to protect his status and reputation. And the thing about lies is the bigger they get, the harder they are to control. It's a year later now, and while the rumours continue, Schofield's lies have managed to dampen the gossip. And so the show goes on. But there is something happening with Schofield's brother, Timothy, which is going to blow the whole thing wide open. It's now March 2023, and Schofield tells Holly that he's going to take a couple of weeks off work. He says he needs to spend time with his mum and his family. Holly's worried. She asks him if everything is okay. He tells her it is. He just needs a few weeks off with his family, and then he'll return to work. Holly wonders what's happening. It's unlike Schofield to be secretive with her. They tell each other everything and they trust each other implicitly. And so she trusts him again and believes that Schofield is really just spending some time with his family. And so Holly is shocked on the 29th of March 2023 when she picks up her phone and becomes aware of the real story. Philip's brother, Timothy Schofield, a civilian police worker, is standing trial at Exeter Crown Court. He is charged with 11 sexual offences involving a child, including two charges of sexual activity with a child between October 2016 and October 2019. The charges are incredibly serious and the victim's testimony in court is heartbreaking. It is said in court that Timothy Schofield emotionally blackmailed and sexually abused the child. The revelation came about when the child, now an adult, confided in a counsellor. Schofield was arrested and charged 12 days later. Holly is absolutely horrified and completely livid. She is horrified by the actions of Schofield's brother, who she has met on several occasions. And above all, she is furious with Schofield for not telling her. She's his best friend. And he kept this quiet, never said a thing. He lied and said he was having some time off because he needed to spend time with his mum, who wasn't well. And this is the worst thing that could have happened. She stands there, live on TV, as the story breaks. Completely blindsided by Philip, completely bewildered, and above all, completely furious. What's worse is Philip has provided a statement to the court, which reveals that his brother, told him about one of the offences involving a child. Schofield says that his brother came to his house in 2021. They talked, watched TV, and then had dinner together. After dinner, while they were washing up, his brother told him about a sexual encounter he had with a child. Schofield told the court, I was washing up with Tim standing behind me, and he said, you're gonna hate me for what I'm about to say. Philip responds that there was nothing he could say to make him hate his brother. His brother then told him about the sexual encounter with the child. Schofield replied, I said, F- stop. I shouted to Tim that this had to stop. I just don't want to know any of the details. It sounded like it was a one-time thing. I said, I don't want you to tell me any more, regardless of how it happened. It must never happen again. He added that, I don't have a relationship with Tim like a brother. There are seven years between us and I moved away when he was 10. Schofield did not go to the police when he was told about the incident. Instead, he told his brother not to tell him any more and that it must never happen again. It is three months after he tells him that the police become aware and arrest Timothy Schofield. This is another and perhaps final, unforgivable act by Schofield. The nail in the coffin. He was told his brother had sexually abused a child, and he did not act on it. And then, he lied about it all, 
to his best friend, Holly. The jury found Timothy Schofield guilty, and he was sentenced to 11 years in prison. The NSPCC praised the bravery of the victim, saying that he showed real courage in coming forward to report it, and real bravery in giving evidence in court. Philip, remarkably, goes back on TV. Only this time, his TV best friend Holly isn't there. She says she's unwell and is taking some time off to recover. Viewers can see through it all. During his return, Philip thanks fans and viewers for their support, and the show goes on. It's a few weeks later, and he returns to the screen with Holly. But this time, it's broken. Their relationship is beyond repair, and while the two desperately try and keep up the facade, the tension is obvious to everyone. Viewers can tell that their relationship is now fake, a complete false image of the two. Jokes about Phil and Holly hating each other are everywhere, on comedy shows, at the BAFTAs, and even by the Prime Minister in the House of Commons. It's completely unfixable. And worst of all, the ratings for the show have started to fall. Daytime TV relies on authenticity, being genuine, and viewers can tell when they're being lied to. They start to switch off, and this panics ITV. After all, while ITV may have been aware of the rumours, the allegations for many years, there's one thing they draw the line at, and that is falling ratings. The show is being damaged each time the pair appear on screen, and so Philip is called by ITV. They tell him this can no longer continue, he needs to go. Schofield is angry, upset, he doesn't want to let go of one of TV's biggest gigs. However, ITV offer him a sweetener. They say that while this morning will be parting ways with him, ITV will not. He will continue to present shows for ITV, including the British Soap Awards and a new primetime show that's in development. They also say that they will allow him to go with pride. Allow him to release a statement saying that he has agreed to move on, as opposed to them firing him which is what is actually happening. And so, on the 20th of May 2023, Schofield issues a statement, saying, Throughout my career in TV, including the very difficult last few days, I have always done my best to be honourable and kind. I understand that ITV has decided the current situation can't go on, and I want to do what I can to protect the show that I love. So, I have agreed to step down from this morning with immediate effect in the hope that the show can move forward to a bright future. I'd like to thank everyone who has supported me, especially this morning's amazing viewers, and I'll see you all for the Soap Awards next month. ITV puts out a statement and says Schofield is one of the best broadcasters of his generation. They thank him for two decades worth of terrific TV. Holly releases a statement, saying the sofa will not feel the same without him. It's hardly the warmest statement you could put out. It's almost as if Holly knows there is more news to come out on Schofield. Schofield is devastated to lose this morning. He's down, but he's not out yet. He thinks he can still continue as one of TV's biggest stars. He hopes that now he's gone from this morning, the rumours about him and Adam will go away. But it's the exact opposite. The story of Schofield's brother being charged with child sexual abuse has reignited the stories and allegations about him and Adam. Everyone is now talking about it. Everyone knows the truth. The noise is deafening. And it is the Mail on Sunday, which is the first mainstream press outlet, to write something publicly on the story. They finally publish a story about the scandal, but it's quite generic. They tread carefully. It simply states that a young runner left the show to go and work on Loose Women, a Mr. Rumour that Schofield had fallen out with him and had got him moved away from the show. Schofield panics. This is the first time that any mainstream media has reported on the story. Sure, it's been online for years, but this crossover to mainstream national media is significant. 
Schofield immediately tells his lawyers to contact the Mail on Sunday to tell them to remove the article. He insists to his lawyers, to his management, his family, to Holly, that it's not true. Even more incredibly, Schofield complains to the Independent Press Standards Organisation, the watchdog for the newspaper industry in the UK, about the article. He says it is false, it's lies, it's defamatory. Philip is determined to continue. So, if Philip was determined to carry on lying, what was it that made it all come out? Why did Schofield finally admit the truth? The answer might surprise you. Because the answer is, he didn't. It was Adam. In fact, Schofield was still determined to go all the way, to keep lying. Adam, however, could not. Schofield has paid thousands for the top law firm Michon de Rea to represent Adam. He says that he paid for his legal fees as the noise got too loud. But others suggest it was with the intention of controlling Adam to keep him quiet. But after hours and hours of conversations with top lawyers, as they try to manage the press interest and Adam tries to keep up the lie, he just can't do it anymore. And it's then to the lawyers that Schofield paid for that he tells them everything. One can only imagine the stress that this young man was under. Lawyers desperately trying to manage press interest, phones ringing off the hook, Schofield denying it, and Adam caught in the middle of it all, continually having to lie, while everything around him was spinning out of control. And for Schofield at that point, there is now no hiding place. Schofield's lawyers call him, and they tell him about Adam's confession. They say they know everything. They ask him up front, is Adam telling the truth? And finally, after years, this is it, it's out. Philip finally confesses that he has been lying to his lawyers and that, in fact, Adam is telling the truth. His lawyers, who have been defending him against the allegations, dealing with hundreds of press phone calls, threats of outing the relationship, the constant noise, now know the truth. And now they know the truth, there is no going back. And so, finally, on the 26th of May 2023, nearly five years after the affair first began, he finally admits to the affair with Adam. He says in a statement, I am making this statement via the Daily Mail, to whom I have already apologised personally for misleading, through my lawyer, who I also misled. I am deeply sorry for having lied to them, and to many others, about a relationship I had with someone working on this morning. I did have a consensual on-off relationship with a younger male colleague at this morning. Contrary to speculation, whilst I met the man when he was a teenager, and was asked to help him to get into television. It was only after he started to work on the show that it became more than just a friendship. The relationship was unwise, but not illegal. It is now over. In an effort to protect my ex-colleague, I haven't been truthful about the relationship. I am painfully conscious that I have lied to my employers at ITV, to my colleagues and friends and my agents, to the media and therefore the public, and most importantly, to all my family. I am so very, very sorry, as I am for having been unfaithful to my wife. I am therefore resigning from ITV with immediate effect, expressing my immense gratitude for all the amazing opportunities they have given me. I will reflect on my very bad judgment in both participating in the relationship and then lying about it. To protect his privacy, I am not naming this individual, and my deepest wish is that both he and his family can now move on with their lives, free from further intrusion, and that this statement will enable them to do so. I ask the media now to respect their privacy. They have done nothing wrong, and I ask that their privacy should be respected. It's another interesting statement from Schofield. While he is finally telling the truth, he is saying that the lies he told 
were only to protect Adam. He says he's being honest now, for Adam's sake. But how true is that? It may well be true that Adam did not want the relationship to be known. But the idea that Schofield was doing this all for him doesn't hold up to much. Schofield wanted to protect his reputation. He wanted his career, his time in the spotlight to continue. By gaslighting Adam in the statement, he's trying to say that all the lying was just for him. Schofield is dropped by his management, his lawyers and ITV. He has nothing left. He gives an exclusive interview to The Sun and the BBC, where he tells his side of the story. He maintains the relationship was unwise but not illegal, and rejects any claims that he groomed or abused Adam. He says that he is no longer in television, and says that his family, his daughters and his wife, have been by his side through the whole scandal. He says it is them that have kept him alive throughout it all. If it wasn't for them, he says he wouldn't be here now. He is a broken man. He has fallen from the highest possible heights, in the most public way possible. Former colleagues, including Eamon Holmes, are quick off the mark and give long interviews condemning his behaviour and his actions on and off the set. And so the scandal is over. The truth is out. But what does this all really say about Schofield? If there was no illegal activity, and it doesn't appear that there was, there is no police investigation into abuse or anything like that, then what did Schofield really do wrong? Well, at the very least, he presided over a toxic culture at this morning, causing colleagues to complain to management about his behaviour, which then led to them leaving the show. He allowed his ego, his arrogance, to overtake him, believing that he was above ordinary people. He did not immediately report his brother to the police when he became aware of child sexual abuse. And he abused his position at ITV. He was a 60-year-old, powerful man. And he brought a young, naive teenager into the television world and then started an illicit affair with him. And then he lied and lied and lied to everyone and anyone who meant anything to him. And so, this scandal is entirely of his own making. Everyone in life makes mistakes. We're all human. And making mistakes when you're in the public eye is brutal. But for Schofield, it's the accumulation of mistakes. The constant lack of moral and ethical judgement over many years and the web of lies that brought him down. And so, what now for Schofield? He says he's no longer in television, and he hasn't made any public appearances since the scandal broke. But how long will that be true for? Schofield says TV and performing is all he's ever done and all he ever wanted to do, and he does still have hundreds of thousands of supporters. After all, Noel Edmonds, Michael Barrymore, Jeremy Carl, Piers Morgan, all embroiled in various scandals, all made a comeback and some are on our screens right now. And so perhaps this story isn't over. Perhaps this is just the end of a chapter. And perhaps we haven't seen the last of Philip Schofield yet.